Good evening. It's March 29th, and uh, welcome to my Coronavirus Isolation Diaries series. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm getting old, and I have to put readers on now. But for today, I thought I'd read something out of a book I mentioned a couple days back called uh, Sweet Small of Success. It's a collection of short stories by Ernest Lehman, and one of which became the name of the movie, uh, Sweet Smell of Success with Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis. I'm going to read to you a short story from this. It is called Clear Havana Filler. And in advance, unlike my great recitation of Jabberwocky last week, or last week, has it been that long? A couple days ago, actually. Um, <clears throat> I may stammer and stutter. Um, I'm not really good at reading things cold. But this is a really cool short story, and it kind of gives you the flair of what this book entails. Clear Havana Filler by Ernest Lehman from his Sweet Smell of Success um, and a bunch, of, which is a collection of his short stories. Harry Kramer was smiling expansively as they rose from the table after lunch. Really a stroke of luck running into you this way, Arnold. New York is almost too damn big for friendships. Have a cigar? He stuck a large Havana filler between his thick lips and was holding one out to Gregor. No thanks, Gregor's delicate features wrinkled with distaste. I don't smoke. Harry eyed him quizzically as he put the cigar back in his vest pocket. That's right, you never did smoke, did you? I almost lost Louisa because of it. She hated my cigars. Still does. Very fastidious girl, you know. I always said you would have been better suited to her. He managed a laugh that could pass as hearty. Don't be silly, Harry. The other man looked away uncomfortably. I don't dare smoke the damn things around the house. Not worth the hell to pay. Well, they were out on the sidewalk now. It's been nice, Arnold. After 12 long years, don't forget me now. Friday night at 7? Gregor hesitated. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. She'll be delighted, I insist. Friday it is, then. In the cab back to the office, Harry sucked on the big cigar with, the, uh, with audible satisfaction. It had taken him only eight days to find Gregor. He waited until she had finished picking at her shrimp cocktail with finicky distaste, and then he said, Who do you think I ran into today, Louisa? Must you talk with food in your mouth? Her forehead split into well-grooved frown lines. And you know I'm not good at guessing games. And that's not all, he thought. Arnold, he said casually. Her face didn't register. Gregor, he said. Arnold Gregor. Oh? There was too little interest in her voice. After all, she had almost married him. Oh, sorry. Bumped into him on the street. He insisted I have lunch with him. He insisted I have lunch with him. I hate to admit it, but he's as handsome as ever. And still a bachelor, of course. All he wanted to know about was you. Don't drip on the tablecloth, tablecloth Harry. You don't think the guy had ever forgotten... Uh, you don't think the guy had never gotten you out of his mind. Twelve years is an awful long time to carry a torch. Her colorless cheeks flushed faintly. What nonsense. He paused for a moment, rehearsing the sentence in his mind carefully before coming out with it. Maybe so, but he did practically invite himself over for dinner Friday night. Arnold is coming here? For, for dinner? Her lips seemed to, uh, to tremble. Well, I couldn't very well say no, he shrugged. He only, th he only think I was being, he'd only think I was being petty and ungracious. Ridiculous, she snorted. But she didn't have but she didn't tell him to cancel it. He listened to them trading reminiscences while he mixed cocktails at the portable bar. Louisa's flat voice rising with a strange new eagerness, Gregor's tone properly restrained. And at the dinner table he continued to scrutinize them from behind his curtain of hearty affability watching Louisa's appraising glance, taking in with obvious approvals Gregor's well-cut clothes and the lean, smoothly shaven face with its crown of blonde hair still thick and unmarred by time. Gregor's pale blue eyes followed every move of Louisa's as she prodded the maid through her paces, and his face was as inscrutable as it had always been. You had to guess what was going on in his mind. 
probably that he was uh, probably that he was what had excited Louise in the old days and worried her just enough to leave her wide open for his own bulldozing proposal. The telephone rang in the foyer, and Harry glanced quickly at his watch as Louisa got up to answering it. She returned with an annoyed expression. It's for you, the office. Don't they ever go home? He went to the phone. Yes. Mr. Kramer, you asked me to call you at 8.30. It was the secretary, probably by home, probably at home by now. Yes, said Harry flatly. Thank you. But was there anything? I mean, is that all? Yes, he waited, until finally she hung up. Then he raised his voice at the dead phone. Roy, this is a damned outrage. We have a guest for dinner. And yes, but... All right, Roy, all right. Yes, in a half hour. He returned to the table with an apologetic shrug. What can I do, he said. I've got to go down there or the whole case will fall apart. Will you forgive me, Arnold? Gregor eyed him steadily. Well, if you really must. Aren't you going to wait for dessert? Louisa sounded unsure of her reaction. Can't. Gotta, go, gotta run. Be back as soon as I can. See you later. He could feel Gregor's eyes following him as he hurried from the room. He kept the lights off and sat there with his feet up on his desk, the tip of the clear Havana filler glowing brightly in the dark. He wanted to do nothing but relax and think, to plan ahead and enjoy in fantasy the wonderful freedom that was going to be his. It was no longer just an idea in the back of his mind. At last the gears were meshing, oiling by years of subconscious thought. And tonight was only the beginning. <clears throat> There'd be, an extra, okay, there'd be an occasional extra ticket to the theater. You two sit together. I'll take the odd seat. The bar meetings for the three of them, to which he'd come late. That damn Stillwell case. The nights when Gregor would have to take her home alone because, he, uh, because he'd have passed out. And there'd be the times when he'd have to bow out of the evening completely and Gregor would fill in. It would take a lot of doing, but he was ready. After the divorce... There would be so many things he wanted to do, but first he'd just sit around all by himself in a nice quiet room, free at last of the carping voice and the critical eyes and the confining straight jacket of her internal fussiness. There would be plenty of time later for the other things, for travel, the races, and of course, for women, new and exciting and as, and as unlike Louisa as possible. No more mistakes like Louisa. Let Gregor make that mistake now. It was past midnight, and the apartment was silent as he let himself in. For a moment, he thought they might have gone out. But then he saw the light in the living room, and Louisa was sitting there in the green club chair glaring at him. Don't tell me you're home, her voice raised testily. His eyes searched the room. She was alone, all right. But there was something strange about the apartment, something he could not quite define. Did Arnold just leave? No. She got up abruptly from the chair and started to fuss with the glass figurines on the coffee table. He said, next time, I'll tell Roy to go to the devil if he calls here when she wheeled around. There won't be any next time. He dared not breathe. What do you mean? Just what I said. Red spots flamed in her pale cheeks. Once is enough. I can't stand him. How could I ever have thought he was? Now, Louisa! His mouth went dry as he sucked in his breath. He was aware of the odor, and all at once he knew what was strange in the room. Vile odor. Vile man, she blurted out harshly. He insisted on, sm he insisted on smoking one right after dinner. Harry went to her. But he doesn't. He said he never enjoys a meal if it isn't topped with a cigar. Couldn't live without him. But, and the minute he saw your humidor, he was at it. Not one, but two. One for dinner, and one to nauseate me in the living room. Harry's eyes wandered dazedly to the copper humidor on the mahogany table, and then he looked at Louisa again. 
half listening to the bitter rasp of her voice as she straightened the ashtrays and set each little piece on the end tables in its proper place. And he knew as he stared at her that he was seeing her in the inscrutable eyes of Arnold Greger had seen her to... He was seeing her as the inscrutable eyes of Arnold Greger had seen her tonight and perhaps before as he, Harry, Gra Harry Kramer, had seen her for 12 long years and would go on seeing her now for the rest of his life. Harry, what are you doing? He didn't answer. He just bit off the dry tip of the dark Havana filler, spat it from his tongue, and brought the flaming match to the other end. Harry! Then he took off his jacket and threw it on the sofa. Dark stains of perspiration showed on his shirt. She moved toward him. You stop that at once! He didn't even look at her. Shut up, he said quietly. Harry! she screamed. He sank in the, in the soft green club chair and began to suck on the big cigar, filling the room with rich white clouds of heavy, acrid smoke. Once again, thank you very much uh, for those of you that watch. Um, it's a kind of a new thing to me to do this series, and I guess I've been bringing a lot of joy to a lot of people, or maybe a few people, maybe no one. But... Um, Something I decided to do since we're uh, in our off times. And uh, once again, let's stay home. Let's try and flatten this curve. It's getting a little dangerous out. We've already had two deaths that are high profile, not counting the many deaths by veritable unknowns, but they're also people too. So let's just stay home. Let's be safe. Let's flatten the curve, and then when it's over, we'll party like it's 1999. Okay? Peace, everybody.